Hey everyone, welcome to another video. और ये वीडियो मैं इंग्लिश बताने वाला हूँ एक्चुअली कुछ लोगों का कमेंट आया है चैनल पे ऑलरेडी कि आप एक्चुअली हिंदी में ये चैनल रखना चाहते हो या फिर इंग्लिश में सो so, बेसिकली मैं ये वीडियो कंपेयर uh, कर रहा हूँ एक्चुअली व्यूज बिटवीन हिंदी वीडियो एंड इंग्लिश वीडियो तो अगर आपको इंग्लिश देखना पसंद है हमें इंग्लिश कंटेंट देखना पसंद है तो बेसिकली आप कमेंट कर सकते हैं या फिर आपको हिंदी में पसंद है ज्यादा तो डेफिनेटली आप कमेंट कर सकते हैं मैं वो रिव्यू एनवी स्टेटिस्टिक से देख लूंगा बिफोर स्टार्टिंग दिस वीडियो इफ यू आर न्यू टू दिस पर्टिकुलर चैनल देन डेफिनेटली गोड एंड सब्सक्राइब डू शेयर दिस वीडियो एवरी वन सो दैट दे गेट सम आइडिया अबाउट द न्यू थिंग्स दैट इज हैपनिंग ऑन साइबर सिक्योरिटी सो लेट गेट स्टार्ट इज दिस वीडियो so in this particular video i am going to talk about uh, what was like um, my first bug bounty journey or the first bug that i found in my cyber security field so basically i started learning about cyber security from 2010 11 basically and uh, yeah so that that time i was at my uh, engineering time so basically in our engineering third year uh, basically we went through one of the cyber security seminar it's a two day workshop kind of seminar where the trainer will arrive and he will teach you something i will cover about that uh, maybe in a different video but uh, let's talk straight to the point that is like how i found the bug bounty uh, that is like my first bug bounty so initially i was looking at lot of uh, i think the one of the thing that i learned really quickly was about xss or cross site scripting but uh, those days i think i was only aware much about the stored cross site scripting and reflected cross site scripting now that was like, like my first learning back in 2012 or 13 i guess now once i learned that i actually started to you know find xss on multiple website i eventually found some as well i think uh, i also some uh, saw some of the right of those days people used to write blogs about the xss so i have read some of the blog where they used to put some of the small audio content i mean sorry small video about the proof of concept Uh, let's say somebody found one xss on dropbox somebody found the xss on youtube playlist basically you have to you know provide with a playlist put an payload in the playlist name and it will basically give you a pop up that's how you got confirm the xss eventually in uh, dropbox also there is a folder structure so basically the folder if you rename the first folder with the xss payload it, it may not work but if you uh, like make the folder name in between or uh, let's say inside the uh, secondary level of folder then you might or you will get an xss that was the i think few of the popular xss that i could remember found by somebody i don't exactly remember the name but yeah i was learning or i was looking for more of xss vulnerability in uh, facebook and paper i think they was paper was really popular those days and uh, they used to pay i think i read that also from some of the blog like you know paper is paying 500 dollar 1000 dollar for finding this kind of bug so what i uh, did is basically i went to the paypal website and signed up and started looking for the xss but uh, unfortunately i was not getting some xss but i got one more interesting stuff which was again i was learning during those days was about idor or how this idor particular vulnerability work and how it can be identified now during those days i found some of the recent transaction kind of page where i did see some you know 8 to 16 uh, digit number character or string i would say uh, combination value now what i did is basically i created two account immediately and i started exchanging the transaction token value and i was able to actually see the transaction value of the different user now i just went ahead and submitted the report to the developer and i think i'll put some screenshot over there if i have uh, i need to check my email really deeply back in 2013 so yeah the developer immediately said like you know no, this is not an issue i think i got a uh, reply from the people security teams like no, no this is not an issue you will have to predict the 16 string values or 16 character length uh, string value in order to find out somebody else uh, transaction detail which i was not able to keep them any or justify them any way like saying okay you know this 16 character can be easily found out by using this algorithm something because there was no such pattern over there or no such known algorithm it was following for generating that 16 length uh, string number or string so what i did basically is i started looking around the application to see if any way i can basically guess somebody else uh, 16 character string or transaction id value which is passing on the url by the way i think in the post request while retrieving the transaction now what i did basically is i went through the application and eventually i found one of the part of the application where 
there is something called as tag creation so once you create a tag well, let's say i'm creating a tag by uh, home or let's say car or tv or fridge or anything now if i create a tag that tag will get this 16 length character string value which was i think i was matching up to some extent then i thought no no this is just somewhere i got a hint like this tag value i can basically use in the transaction detail to see if i can get some different real details now the moment i copied the same i created a tag let's say bug and uh, i copied the string value or the 16 st character string length string value and copy pasted instead of this transaction id and as soon as i hit it i could able to see some chinese user or i think some japanese user details so that way i got to confirm that no no this is actually following the same pattern that they have already implemented and uh, they are basically reusing the same algorithm and that is how i could actually predict some different user uh, transaction id value so this is a small story it might not be like uh, you know that huge about the id but this was basically my first bug bounty um, from PayPal and I got I think 500 USD to 1000 USD I don't remember exactly yeah but I think back in 2013 that was a good amount for me so I believe that was 1000 USD yeah so they paid me 1000 USD for that via the PayPal only and uh, yeah this was a story about uh, how I got actually my first bug bounty in the PayPal website and that was an idol I was looking for uh, excesses but I got an idol but that's how it happened uh, I mean in bug bounty journey you might not get exactly what you are looking for rather than if you are being little creative around the particular application or the particular parameter or the particular URL that you are testing you will definitely find something there later on I did saw some of the guys who found actually RCE on the same particular area which I couldn't able to find because I knew that I am having little less knowledge toward the RCE but yeah I think some guy found an RCE in the paper I think using the curly braces some number and eventually one of my friend also find some RC over there in the transition detail upload or file upload section in the application so I think during those days there were a lot of issues to be there in the PayPal and I believe a lot of guys has already earned a lot of money from the PayPal bug bounty during the initial phase so I hope uh, this video is helpful for you if you are a beginner who is watching if not if you are experienced person also I am pretty sure uh, you would have done some bug mount in your career then or something that get you started in your cyber security journey then definitely comment or you can share uh, we can definitely talk more on that thanks for watching this video and i hope to see you soon with another video hope you have learned something out of this video